Good morning from the garden. It's the 19th of April and that means that we're in the middle of what in our climate is called the Hungry Gap. It's the time of year in spring, uh, mainly April and May, when the winter vegetables are mostly finished, but before we're able to start harvesting the things that we have sown uh, this year. Many people are trying to become self-sufficient now and this time of year is the trickiest when you rely on homegrown produce. So in today's video I want to show you no less than 10 perennial vegetables that we grow so that we can harvest them in this time of the year to bridge the hungry gap. Uh, you can't expect to have a perennial version of every annual vegetable that you grow. Uh, perennial vegetables can be quite different from what we're used to as often having stronger taste but they're also more robust and often easier to grow. Uh, there is a surprising variety and among the 10 vegetables that I'm going to show you, uh, some you might know, but many you have probably not considered yet. So let's get started with the one that we have in the kitchen garden with perennial broccoli. So this plant is called Nine Star Perennial Broccoli and actually it's uh, grown in much the same way as purple sprouting broccoli. You sow it in spring, uh, plant it out, and then you can start harvesting the florets uh, after it has overwintered. But the difference is that this plant, as long as you harvest all the florets and don't allow it to go to seed, will peren perennialize, which means you can keep it for several years. So this plant has been sown two years ago. Um, this actually is one plant. So you need to realize it takes up quite a bit of space. It will need at least one square meter. Um, but I'm very happy with the harvest. Uh, it's actually the florets are larger than last year. Um, if you grow purple sprouting broccoli, then you will definitely be able to grow this one. But the taste is a little different. I think it's closer to cauliflower in taste than actual broccoli. The second perennial plant I want to show you is one that you probably do know and I hope you grow it because it's definitely one of our favorite. It's asparagus. Unlike the perennial broccoli, which is perennial but quite short-lived, asparagus can give you harvest for 10 years, 20 years if you uh, take care of the plants. Um, we grow a variety called Heinlim. We're very happy with it. It's an all male hybrid and one of uh, Dutch, it's a Dutch variety. Lim stands for Limburg, which is the main province, asparagus growing province in the Netherlands. Uh, we planted them, I think, three years ago, four years ago. So now we are able to harvest uh, until the longest day. And as you can see, harvest is overdue. Some of the spears are quite large but they will be tasty nevertheless. And asparagus actually is one of the plants that I consider really worth growing yourself because it tastes so much better when it's fresh than when you buy it and it's already been lying around in the shop for several days. Number three, lovich, right behind me which I grow as a part of the fruit tree guild of this uh, um, cherry tree. And the function that it fulfills here in the, uh, in the guild is it attracts beneficial insects. But it's also a culinary herb or a perennial vegetable. And Stephen Barstow in his book Around the World in 80 Plants calls it spring celery. You can use it in much the same way for as, as a base for soups and stews. And I uh, do that often in spring. Uh, the stalks are nice and succulent in spring. The taste is quite a bit stronger than celery, but you can also blanch, force and blanch the plants and then uh, the taste becomes milder. Super useful from plant for the edible forest garden. Another of my fruit tree guilds and another super useful uh, perennial vegetable is this Welsh onion, which um, forms large clumps. It's also, uh, it's easily grown from seed. And again, it's uh, super useful at this time of year 
um, when you can use it as spring onion. This plant is about four years old and I'm planning to harvest some seeds this year and uh, try to propagate it. You could also divide the clumps. Number five is this perennial kale. In Dutch it's called Euge Muskel or what is it? Everlasting kale. Um, it is uh, also the plants become quite large. The reason it is perennial is that it does not flower and form seed. You can only propagate it by taking shoots in spring but this is done very easily and I'm planning on uh, propagating a few for friends because there are, oh, there's always great demand. Uh, quite surprisingly I said at the beginning that uh, the taste of perennial vegetables is usually stronger than their annual counterparts but in this case the leaves have quite a mild taste and um, it's a super useful vegetable you can harvest it almost year-round. Number six is a plant that you quite probably know but maybe do not know it's an edible plant. Uh, it's hosta which is grown as an ornamental uh, mainly in shady locations which makes it a great plant for the edible forest garden for growing under trees. Uh, in Japan and maybe other uh, oriental countries hostas are grown as vegetable and what is harvested are the rolled up uh, young shoots. Stephen Barstow again grows, uh, calls them hostons. You can uh, steam them lightly. We eat them in the same way as asparagus uh, and later you can also eat the flower buds or the flowers which are also edible. We have several uh, hosta plants over there but they're quite young we can show you. They are from plants that I divided last year and I want to give them a chance to just get bigger before we start harvesting from them. And also they had some frost damage this year so I'm leaving those but I can harvest some shoots from the other plants. And again you could uh, blanch uh, force the plants in spring either by covering them with a bucket or by earthing them up. Another great plant for shady spots is ostrich fern. Um, what you harvest in this case are the young shoots which are still rolled up um, and in North America they are very popular as, an, as a wild edible and they are called fiddleheads. Uh, my plants are quite young so I'm waiting for them to get more established before we start harvesting them but this is a great spot for them under the hazelnut and I want to add more plants here so that we can have a more bountiful harvest of fiddleheads in the future because it's one of the uh, yeah, maybe most popular wild edibles uh, in the world. Number eight, Good King Henry. A sort of a ancestor of spinach but in this case the leaves are much coarser and slightly bitter when you, if you eat them raw so I prefer to cook them but you can also blanch them if you want a milder taste. We have the plants here in full sun but it's a quiet shade tolerant plant that will succeed in uh, uh, at least partial shade so also a good one for the um, edible forest garden. Number nine is a plant that I consider one of the tastiest perennial vegetables and one of the most ornamental ones but unfortunately I do not have a lot of luck growing it in my gardens. Um, I have here one which is not in a great spot so I'm going to dig it up and uh, move it to hopefully a better spot. Um, I have grown these from seed the thing to know about that is that the seed needs to be fresh otherwise it will not germinate. But I have also planted some plants in my parents garden in heavy clay which should not be ideal for sea kale which is a coastal vegetable but in their garden they thrive they are beautiful large plants. The thing that you harvest usually are also in this case blanched shoots. You can uh, pick the florets the sort of um, 
the flower buds when they're still closed as a sort of mini broccoli. They have beautiful white flowers that are popular with bees. So really a great plant. And I hope that if I move this one and to a better, more a sunnier spot, it will, it will do better for us. I have another small plant in a, in a pot. Another way to propagate it is by taking root cuttings. For the final 10th vegetable, we had to come to our backyard. And number 10 is this plant, sea beet, which is an ancestor of both red beet and chard. And uh, the leaves are a little similar to chard and you can use them in the same way. Otherwise, it's a really easy plant, it self sows. I have several here, but I tried also growing it to our, on our bigger plot and it does not seem to grow there well, uh, possibly because it needs a bit sheltered microclimate, which it does get in this uh, um, warm, uh, warm part of our backyard. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it inspired you to grow some perennial vegetables uh, for the leaner times of the year. If you grow some other vegetables that I have not mentioned, please let me know in the comments and I will see you again soon. Happy gardening!